going to have a different cup of coffee today. As I was uh, driving home, encountered it's what I normally encounter in this area on wet roads. So for those of you that this does not apply, I apologize, but it's, I guarantee you, you know somebody just like this. Dear people in big ass trucks, please understand that I'm currently driving a 2004 Toyota Corolla with over 300,000 miles on it. I have a smaller vehicle, which means I have smaller tires. Smaller tires means less surface area in contact with the road. When it rains, I have to factor in that water further reduces the surface area of my tires in contact with the road. Because I have common sense and understand the limitations of my vehicle, I drive more slowly when it's raining, especially when it's raining hard. I was taught to not outdrive the distance I can see, especially here in the mountains where there are blind curves. Torrential rain reduces the distance a person can see. Therefore, it would make sense to further reduce the speed of the vehicle when it's raining. You may have Superman x-ray vision. I do not. Pooling of water that occurs with torrential and or prolonged rain is yet another thing to take into consideration. Smaller tires equals a greater chance of hydro planning for me. I'm glad there are those who have the wheel width to take on puddles of water the size of fishing holes at 70 miles per hour and leave a huge plume in their wake. I cannot. For those who are looking for the thrill of this kind of adventure, may I suggest you find an area other than a public road. I understand that if I hydroplane, I not only stand the chance to lose the only vehicle I have at the moment, but I also know that my insurance rates would skyrocket following an accident, in addition to the possibility of causing harm to someone else if I lose control of my vehicle. I have concern not only for myself, but for others who share the road. I know that many innovations have come into being since I started driving almost 40 years ago, but to my knowledge, the laws of physics have not changed. According to DefensiveDriving.com, quote, under dry conditions when traveling at 70 miles per hour, you can expect an average overall stopping distance between 315 to 320 feet, more than the length of two football fields, end quote. Driveandstayalive.com states that when traveling 70 miles per hour on a wet road, the overall stopping distance goes to 560 feet, which is 240 feet more than on a dry road. The fact that I can't see your headlights in my rearview mirror gives me the impression that you're not going to be able to stop suddenly if need be. I'll make you a deal. I will pull off the road when I can so that I no longer impede your progress because I'm sure you'll attest that your time is more valuable than mine. That being said, I will also make you a promise. If you rear in my vehicle, I will take legal action against you. In Virginia, any time that someone rear ends a vehicle, the driver is automatically charged with failure to maintain control of their vehicle. My dash cam can and will be used as evidence against you. I will not only discuss legal issues and damages with your insurance company, but have the option of filing personal charges against you. I will promise I will not stop taking legal action until I own your big-ass truck, your home, your camouflage collection, and your bird dog. I will also insist that the state take your driver's license for your display of reckless endangerment to the life of others. If you don't have enough sense to drive your big-ass truck responsibly, you need to exchange it for something you can control and do less damage with, like a bicycle. This statement is also directed towards SUVs and teens who think anyone over the age of 25 needs to do society a favor by going ahead and dying. In other words, develop some common sense in spite of your common core learning, have some respect for others, leave 15 minutes earlier in the future, and get off my ass. Ran over. Thank you.